In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Greetings. I'm blessed to be with you today. I'm Deacon Joe Cazon from St. Thomas the Apostle, and I'm grateful that you're taking part in this prayer service today, Thursday of the sixth week of Easter. Today we celebrate the Solemnity of the Ascension of the Lord. In our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we hear Jesus telling the Apostles not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for their baptism with the Holy Spirit. Our second reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians explains how Jesus has given us all different gifts that we may build up the body of Christ. In our gospel, Jesus tells his disciples and us to proclaim the gospel to the whole world, and then he's taken up into heaven. Our Easter joy continues as we celebrate Jesus defeating death in his triumphant entry into heaven, where he will bring all together with him. We also celebrate Our Lady of Fatima today, when in 1917, three Portuguese children received apparitions of Our Lady and were asked to pray the rosary for world peace. We see the message of Fatima as a simple call to prayer. It's up to us to not let this message go unanswered. Our prayer individually and as a community is powerful and can bring about change in the world, so desperate in this world, so desperate for unity and peace. Thank you for watching and for participating in today's service. I would typically invite all gathered to turn and greet each other. So in the spirit of community, please still do this as we envision each other's wonderful handshakes, hugs, and smiles. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving. For the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. In their first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but a few days, in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven 
will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, joy, joy. God mounts his throne. God mounts his throne. Shouts of joy, God mounts his throne, to shouts of joy, 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 God mounts his throne. All you peoples clap your hands and shout to God with joy. is throne to shouts of joy. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, joy, joy. God mounts his Trumpet sounds with joy. Come and join the song of praise to God. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy. Joy, joy. God mounts his throne. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the calling you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift, and he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers, to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to mature to manhood, to the extent of the full stature of Christ. The word of the Lord.
Alleluia, Alleluia. Go and teach all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always, until the end of the world. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Everything about today's reading, uh, readings in Psalm is about joy and the fulfillment of the prophets that our Savior would defeat death and take his place in the kingdom of heaven with God the Father. All of what Jesus taught in his ministry and revealed to his disciples was coming true, and we have Holy Scripture to tell us this good news. We're given the gift of the Holy Spirit just as the apostles were given, to enable us to do the same. The good news that has been told to us and that Jesus has revealed now has to be told to everyone. The ability to receive this good news demands faith, and we're taught that faith demands action. There's always some form of action in the miracles that Jesus performed, whether through healing, restoring sight, there is a change taking place and usually more than just what was happening externally. I always love the Ephesians reading that speaks of the humility and gentleness and patience we receive are calling through the bond of peace. When reading it, I like to stop and reread that portion and really let it sink in. There's so much to learn in that second reading. I invite you to take the time to read it again and let Jesus speak to you in silence. We're all called to some form of ministry in order to build up the body of Christ. We all can make a difference in the world when we work together. Our gospel says the same thing when Jesus directs us all to go into the world and proclaim the gospel before he ascends into heaven. This mystery of faith can take us beyond what our minds can fully understand but our hearts really long to know. We're told he will come again, but has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit to fulfill our mission. Jesus loves us so much that he suffered and took on our sins on his shoulders so that we might inherit the gift of eternal life. I realize that there is a lot of suffering happening today, struggles involving health, jobs, loneliness, lack of basic needs, racial divisions, and more than I can even list here. Please know that even though it doesn't seem like it, God is walking by our side through it all. And we can walk through it all together, supporting each other. We are all part of his plan that will be revealed to us. Sisters and brothers, I'm grateful that we're on this journey together and that we can Walk with each other while Jesus loves us and holds us close. I pray that you find, to be, find time to be with the Lord today. And may the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. As we journey into... Jesus' ascension into heaven, and anticipate the Holy Spirit's coming on Pentecost Sunday, let us bring our prayers before our God. We pray for those that serve the church, 
those separated from the church and for those that persecute the church and her members, that the love of God has, that the love God has for all of us may permeate all our hearts, leading to peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all who struggle with mental health issues and for those who care for someone with mental illness. In this month of mental health awareness, we pray that those who need our help will reach out to their caregivers and, will and the caregivers will present good options for assistance. We pray to the Lord. For an affirmation and awareness of the dignity of all human life, especially during this time of pandemic, for an attitude and response of care and solidarity with those who have been affected by the coronavirus and those who are at risk. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the first communicants and their families, that the embrace of our parish family brings them to the table of the Lord every week to share in the bread of life. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick of our parish family, those recovering from surgery, and those caring for them, that the Holy Spirit may fill their hearts with hope, peace, and healing. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have died, that Jesus' promise of eternal life be known to them, and that those who grieve be comforted by their faith and the faith of those around them. We pray to the Lord. And for those intentions in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Almighty God, enlighten our minds with your wisdom, fill our hearts with your love, and grant the petitions we make according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. And when we would normally share in the communion of the bread, we'll share in the prayer of spiritual communion by St. Padre Pio. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And in this month devoted to Mary, our mother, please join me in saying the Memorare. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, employed thy help, or sought thine intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, 
O Virgin of Virgins, my mother, to thee do I come. Before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Thank you again for sharing in this prayer service today. I pray that being together for this service and the hope of but the hope and joy of Jesus' ascension into heaven brings us to the realization that the Spirit is with us now and always. I hope to see you soon. Peace.